Hello everyone and welcome to this video wherein I am going to be discussing a very interesting option that you have if you are planning to pursue your masters. Now what is the need behind this particular video? So I have categorized people into some buckets so if you belong to one or many of these buckets do have a look at this entire video and explore this option that I am going to share with you. So the first thing is you have got a program but you are not very sure of whether it's going to work for you or not, whether it fits your interests or not. The second thing is you don't really have an admit yet and you are looking forward to pursuing your masters this year itself. You of course have a few subjects in your mind that you are interested in but you are not really aware of the kind of opportunities that exist. The third thing is you have applied for some processes like say even the CET cap rounds for that matter or even you are going to apply for programs like MSc finance from JBIMS or MSc finance from Simsri uh, which might come up with their calls soon uh, but then again it seems a bit uncertain as to whether again you will enjoy those programs or not or uh, whether you are going to get a convert from there or not you are not very sure of that. Uh, you don't really have a very credible brand on your CV which is preventing you from getting placements and you don't really have the skills that will again make you employable. So if you are facing one or many of these issues that exist um, then boy do I have an option for you which is really interesting and that option here is this particular program MSc Economics by Flame University. Now Flame University is of course a very reputed university that exists and MSc in Economics is a program which is focused on economics plus statistics. So if these subjects are uh, kind of some things that uh, you are excited about then do check out this program. There is going to be another video wherein I am going to be talking about careers in economics. Uh, so do have a look at that video as well. It will help you understand the uh, beauty of economics as a subject, the combination of economics with statistics and of course the future prospects that lie in terms of the roles and the organizations that you could be working for. Now in terms of the parameters that you need to consider whenever it comes to any institute wherein you want to pursue your masters from, there are four parameters that I have mentioned here. The first is in terms of faculty and pedagogy. Now considering that economics is a very solid subject you will need someone to teach it to you in a manner that you will be able to understand it from. Otherwise economics is fairly dense. A lot of you would not really like economics because it was not taught well to you during your school days. So of course you have to get rid of that mentality and look at economics as a nice subject. In fact a personal anecdote I did not really enjoy economics uh, or I did not really enjoy uh, finance slash commerce subjects when I was in my 11th, 12th standard or even during my graduation I did not feel the need to pick up these subjects but during my post graduation I realized how beautiful economics is and how economics is kind of the underlying glue that binds your entire business processes and even the entire world if you look at it. So faculty and pedagogy is going to be very important when it comes to any college that you are going to go to. Uh, extracurricular support of course it's not just about learning subjects at a college you also get those two years to transform yourselves as an individual uh, learn or acquire a lot of skills that you would not have acquired during your graduation so all those things need to be considered when you're looking at um, uh, an institute then we are talking about the fees very important at this point in time because you are of course not earning at the moment or maybe you are earning but in a limited capacity and um, any amount that is going to be a lot for you is going to dissuade you from pursuing that program so we'll have a look at the fees bit as well and finally Finally, the most important part, the outcome uh, or the way in which we measure outcomes uh, of any programs are the placements. So we'll have a look at the placements as well. Now in terms of faculty and pedagogy, if you are looking at uh, the MSc Economics course from Flame University, you will have faculty members from London School of Economics, University of Cambridge, University of Texas, among many others. So there are a lot of universities, um, globally renowned universities that um, the faculty have been a part of. So I have just mentioned a few highlights here. But otherwise, if you can just go to their page and just check out the uh, kind of pedigree that the faculty bring to the table, then you will be amazed at it. And Flame, of course, is a, is a, is a great uh, brand to be a part of so you can of course consider that. Now there are there are a few subjects slash electives that are there as a part of the course and um, there were a few that I found to be particularly interesting right they, they were really interesting to read about and um, uh, if I were a part of the institute I would have been very excited to uh, pursue these as well. So the first thing is called econometrics. Now what is econometrics? Econometrics is econo plus metrics. Now metrics basically means measuring something. So we are combining economics plus statistics slash data which will help us arrive at decisions. 
decisions. Now, uh, again, the separate video that I was talking about, wherein I will be discussing the careers in economics. In that video, I would be covering this in some amount of depth. So do have a look at that video as well if this subject excites you. The second thing is data mining for business and economic intelligence. Now, you know that today is the day and world wherein data is very important. Uh, a lot of uh, these apps that you use, a lot of these services that you use are virtually free or they cost you much less than what uh, it takes to build them. And that is purely because they are mining data. They are trying to get insights. They are trying to get customized um, solutions for you on the basis of the data that they dig. And data mining for business and economic intelligence, of course, is at the base of all of this. So if you are someone who is an expert in this, I think you will be uh, a valuable asset in the corporate sector. So data mining for business and economic intelligence is a subject. It's really interesting. So you can also read about it a bit, uh, but I found this to be extremely interesting in this particular curriculum. Then economic modeling and forecasting. Now, of course, you have a lot of data that is there, but how do you predict things? How do you figure out which part of those, uh, which parts of those data uh, or that data is relevant to us or which parts are not relevant to us? So all those things will be a part of economic modeling. And of course, on the basis of that, you build forecasts. You try to figure out what is going to happen in the future. So it's kind of looking or gazing into the crystal ball kind of a thing. Very, very interesting subject economic modeling and forecasting and again uh, a lot of the projects that you get after your masters or once you're in the corporate will involve forecasting so this is basically something that is going to be useful to you and there was one subject which you might not really appreciate a lot in your day-to-day -day life but this is called informal economy now informal economy is basically the counterpart of the formal economy that exists now formal economy consists of people who have salaries who have jobs who have work ex letters and so on and so forth but informal economy consists of people who don't really uh, have a structured employment kind of a thing going for them. So how exactly do you measure informal economy? How exactly do you design policies that will impact this informal economy? What have been the historical things that have happened because of which this informal economy has been affected? So all these I found to be really interesting subjects or really interesting courses that were there as a part of the curriculum. There are a lot many courses. You can check it out from the uh, course, the, the entire page that exists. I uh, will be sharing that the link in the description box below. Do have a look at that. But I found these four to be like really interesting. Of course, there are a lot of other things, including games game theory and uh, quantitative techniques and whatnot. But these are the ones that I thought were really interesting. In terms of extracurricular support, of course, you don't really go to an institute just to study subjects, right? Especially for your masters. Because in school, yes, it made sense because everything was being delivered to you. In college, yes, it made sense because everything was being delivered to you. But now you are a professional, I would say, or a semi-professional. Uh, you are almost there. You are about to join the workforce of India. And for that, you also need to be equipped in terms of the other skills that you will need to bring to the table. It's not just about subject knowledge. It's about interactions with people as well. And for that, there is some extracurricular support that is also provided in the MSc Economics program at Flame University. So it's a full-time uh, two-year residential program, which takes a lot of headache out of your mind uh, in terms of what needs to be done, how do you need to do it, how do you go about the classes everything is organized and you don't need to worry about a lot of stuff which gives you the bandwidth to participate in other activities which basically means that the student participation in campus governance. Now, this is again something which I found to be very interesting. Uh, as I dug deeper, it, it's basically uh, your participation in maintaining the uh, campus, right? Uh, so it does not really mean maintaining the campus per se, but making sure that the governance is top notch. Because once you go into the corporate, uh, you will, of course, be uh, expected to know how to govern things, how to conduct yourself, how exactly to work in teams. So all those things will be relevant to you. So this is basically your opportunity. You will get to participate in campus campus governance activities which means that you will be in charge of a lot of decision making uh, or decision making processes that happen at the campus this is going to give you a lot of good exposure in terms of becoming or evolving into a better individual per se in terms of student clubs as well there are a lot of opportunities available so last i checked there were 40 plus clubs that were there as a part of your uh, campus experience and uh, that is something that is going to help you uh, become better at your area of expertise also make sure that everybody is uplifted that is the whole idea uh, so student clubs are going to be really valuable um, additions to your cv and of course to your experience at the institute as well 
the last bit i am talking about is something that is called a student house system now student house system is essentially uh, again not to draw a parallel but something like what you would have seen in the harry potter movies let's say for example right wherein you are a part of a particular house and you have to ensure that your house is conducted in a better manner right you are the representative you are the ambassador for your house and that is basically something something similar um, uh, will will happen to you as well and uh, that is basically where you will figure out how exactly to plan ahead of time how to strategize how to build camaraderie you will have um, friendships and um, alliances so to say that will last a lifetime and that is of course going to help you in your future prospects as well now talking about future prospects you also have to invest something to reach the future and that is where the fees come into the picture the program fees is 13.5 lakhs over 2 years so one year it's 6.7 lakhs and the other year is 6.8 lakhs but fret not um there are merit based scholarships that are available so as a part of the process there will be a test called feet again the uh, link to that and the details will be present in the description box below do have a look at it so there is 50 to 100% scholarship that is available on tuition fees uh, on the basis of your performance at the test and the a uh, process that is going to be there so um, that that is something that should give you some respite and this is uh, merit based um, so of course whoever performs well will end up getting um, the scholarship that they deserve in a way so do have a look at that as well and uh, do check out the program now the most important thing is in terms of placements so if you if you if you don't really have a good placement outcome then of course you will not be interested in the program so i'll just share some roles that have appeared at the institute and of course it's a, a relatively new program so the roles uh, that have been mentioned here are kind of really good in terms of the age of the program so we are talking about trainee at bajaj finserv amc now amc is of course an asset management company wherein uh, bajaj finserv will take a lot of assets and they will distribute those assets they will try to uh, manage those assets they will try to grow those assets so that is basically what we are looking at in this particular case so i am sure you would have heard of this company called bajaj finserv right financial solutions they will give loans to people and uh, they will also give you Uh, some fixed income assets that will be there um, in terms of bonds or something corporate bonds kind of a thing they will also take that money that they are getting uh, and then they will be able to figure out whether a particular individual is credit worthy or not and then they will be able to um, uh, make sure that they, they, they don't really have uh, bad uh, debts or something right so that is basically the the role uh, that you will evolve into at a later point in time but of course bajaj finserv amc is one of the uh, top recruiters on campus uh, there is this company called client associates which is again from a similar background of course you are studying economics and statistics you will be studying risk management in general you will also be trying to figure out how exactly to use data to make decisions and that also involves investment based decisions so you can be a wealth associate at client associates as well the next thing is deloitte usi so deloitte usi is basically deloitte us india so it is the um, uh, indian counterpart to see or you can say uh, an indian arm of deloitte uh, and you can join there as a business analyst as well So again, if you want to pursue a career in consulting, again this is your in uh, your uh, in into it, right? And uh, you can start as an analyst, which means that you will be looking at a lot of reports, a lot of data. You will try to enable the consulting team to uh, be able to consult well or pitch their products well, pitch their services well, uh, or even uh, come up with better solutions. So that is something that your role will be. But of course, at a later point in time, you will evolve into a consultant as well, because this is basically where a lot of people start. Then research associate at Euro Monitor. international now euro monitor is a very interesting organization i would urge you to check out what euro monitor does and uh, research associate will tell you that euro monitor is into research so they do a lot of research around a lot of different things so let's say for example uh, the uh, agriculture sector in india now euro monitor will come up with a report on the agriculture sector in india what all are the trends what are the kharif crops rabi crops rainfall what is the impact how much is the produce how much is exported how much is uh, how much of uh, imports do we need how much of subsidies do we need all those things will be a part of that research so you will be a research associate at euro monitor international uh, because of your knowledge of economics and um, statistics in general then i am also looking at a few of these organizations which sounded very interesting to me so ppf is is basically uh, for people uh, who are into investments if you have made an investment at some point in time if you are into mutual funds you would have heard of this uh, term ppfas or this company called ppfas i did not really spell it out for you because this is parak parik uh, so parak parik financial advisory services if you look at it 
it is it is really uh, uh, one of the uh, top names that you will see when it comes to a mutual fund specifically so of course you can be a part of ppfas uh, again as an associate as an analyst and then you can of course grow uh, uh, your way up uh, the chain so it's a very credible brand name to be a part of especially if you want to get into um, investing or if you want to get into asset management and stuff like that so that is basically one of the good brand names that you will have first cry again i wrote first cry here because of a very interesting reason so first cry and helium specific Specifically, I wrote here because they are very interesting companies. Now you might think that they are selling some stuff, right? So First Cry is um, mostly towards uh, children, and uh, Helium is mostly towards bamboo-based um, uh, socks and stuff, right? right? Stuff like that. So they are very interesting companies to work for. But why would they feature here? Because these companies also have a lot of data using which they have to make decisions on which platform to register, how exactly to market the products, how to reach out to a lot of people. So that is basically where you come into the picture, and that's why I wrote these companies, very interesting companies that we have here. Fisher Jordan again is an uh, organization you can again have a look at it. Uh, it's a very interesting organization again. So all these are the organizations that I found to be interesting. But the most interesting part is this. One of the students from the passing batch of or the graduating batch of MSc Economics uh, has got an admit into London School of Economics. Now that is basically for pursuing higher studies. Of course, I will be discussing the academic prospects of the MSc Economics program in the other video that I mentioned. So do have a look at that video as well when it comes out. But you can also pursue higher studies from reputed universities like the London School of Economics, Chicago Business School, um, and so on and so forth. The the entire world is open for you because it's a program with some credibility that exists. Right, and MSc Economics is kind of a sought after, um, uh, sought sought after specialization or a program that you can be a part of. Now, what to do next? Very simple steps. The deadline to apply to this program is the fifth of August. So, what you can do is you can check out the link in the description box below. You can have a look at all the information that we have provided as a part of that link, and you can simply apply to the program. You will get a call from uh, the people uh, who matter, and uh, of course, they are going to guide you through the next steps that are going to be there. There is going to be a test. It's a it's a test that you can manage um, based on statistics and everything so it's called feet so that will be the uh, test that you will have and there are certain other steps to the process as well uh, on the basis of your performance at this you will be offered um, an admit uh, and uh, of course if you perform well at this test then you will also be eligible for the merit based scholarship that i had mentioned earlier so do check out the program if you are interested do apply at the earliest and uh, make sure that um, you uh, are a part of a good program at the end of it and if you have any doubts any queries regarding the program do let me know in the comment section below we'll try to get back to you with the answers to those queries and yeah i'll see you again in the next video wherein i'll be discussing the uh, the careers in economics that you can pursue after graduating uh, with an msc uh, in economics from flame university